Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. This time I will be showing you how I painted my Sector Imperialist building set that came with my Kill Team starter set. Of course you could change the colors to your liking and make with these ruins whatever you want to do. I tried painting a bone color scheme for the inside parts of the ruin and a gray scheme for the outside. You could decide to do it the same way or just uh, use the scheme both sides. There's a ton of ways you could paint these ruins and they all look uh, pretty great. If you like this video, please show your support by leaving a like, comment and subscribing to the channel to keep up with new videos. All those things help a ton. With all that said, let's get started. I'm going to start by priming the model with gray primer. For that, I'm going to use surface primer gray from Vallejo. You could use any other primer that you like. White, Corex white, any other light primer would be good because the outside is a very light gray and the inside is a bone color or almost yellow. So a light base is going to be very helpful to start. I'm going to start by painting the outside with Celestra gray. And you can see that I already painted a little bit of a shafty bone on one of the columns and that's because I made a mistake. Uh, I wanted to paint the whole thing in a bone but then I decided to go with Celestra gray on the outside. And uh, yeah, I'm going to use a large flathead uh, dry brush, big brush for uh, base coating the whole thing. And uh, just uh, this kind of brush is going to make it a lot quicker. And you don't need, really need to thin that much, just a tiny bit. If you thin your paint too much, it's going to create bubbles and it's going to look a little bit more transparent. Uh, you can get away with getting uh, using your paint a little bit thicker in here and this is terrain so you don't have to be as precise as with the miniature. Just make sure to cover all of the outside parts with this color and leave all of the detail. Uh, there's going to be other colors you can leave it as it is or you just can cover the whole thing and uh, that's it. Once that's done I'm going to do exactly the same thing with Ushafti Bone but this time for the inside parts of the building. Uh, you can cover the whole area if you don't want to paint that many details. You can see that uh, the set uh, on the back side of the box, you can see that uh, the Games Workshop team didn't spend much time painting all of the metallic parts that I did. Uh, but I think it looks pretty good when you spend a little bit more time and pick a lot more details. Uh, but you don't have to, you can just cover the whole thing and dry brush it and call it a day. Uh, but I'm going to go through the whole process and also painting terrain uh, uses a lot of paint so be prepared to, to use a lot of paint and I think the set would at least uh, run you through a couple paint pots of, of, of base color and uh, a couple of pots of uh, wash as well and that goes for all of the colors that you're going to use once it's done, the last base color is going to be Stick It and Scale Green before we go to the washes and this color is going to go on the floor tiles. Uh, they are just mainly on the top floor and uh, just to cover these areas the same way as we did with the last uh, colors. Uh, but because this is a dark color over a white primer, it takes a couple coats. Uh, so don't be afraid to uh, let, apply just one uh, thin coat, let it dry and come back and put another one and uh, just uh, make sure to go into all of those uh, recesses on the very edges uh, so that you don't leave any spots uh, with uh, just the primer color. Once it's done I'm going to move on to the washes and for the inside I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia and this is going to go all over the inside of the wall. Just make sure to, don't, to not be shy with this color because uh, it needs to go into all of the recesses and tint the whole area. Uh, if you want it to look dirtier, you can apply it even harder. If you don't want to, it to look that uh, bad, you can just focus on the recesses. Uh, for me, I went all over the area and just let it pull on the recesses and use it. Uh, don't be shy to use it because if you, you, if you apply very little of it, it's not going to look natural. So make sure just to uh, use a large brush and move it, move, move it around. And uh, if it pulls a little bit, you can stretch it and then uh, cover areas that are not covered yet. Uh, so uh, yeah, just make sure to use it, this uh, very liberally. 
You can see that some of the areas I left alone, that's because they're going to be painted with a different color. If you want, you can make the wall just one plain color and paint all of it with bone and wash it and then dry brush it and call it a day, as I said before. And uh, that's going to be a lot faster, uh, but uh, because I'm not planning to do that, I left those colors in white and they look a little bit weird. Uh, but in this step, just make sure to cover all of the places that are going to end up looking bone and uh, don't be afraid to use this wash very heavily. Next, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the outside, but this time with Nuln oil. And make sure to, whenever you use these washes, to shake them vigorously because the insides of the wash starts to separate with time if you let them sit for very long. Uh, it, they are composed by matte medium, flow aid, and ink. And if they're not mixed properly, you can end up just using one of those uh, components and end up with a glossy or even a frosted miniature. So for weird stuff not to happen, you need to shake this uh, mixture very well and make sure that it's applied um, correctly. And again, don't be afraid to use this very heavily. Uh, I know paint is expensive, but it needs to get into all of those recesses and kind of stain uh, the area so that it looks natural. It's going to look uh, dirty and grimy, and, but it's going to look natural. It's going to look good. Uh, is there a cheaper way to do this? Some people like to make their own washes and there's tutorials on YouTube. You can search for those or uh, you can look for cheaper wash alternatives. Uh, for me, I think I'm going to keep it safe and use just Citadel washes. Uh, I think it's worth it if you want very cool looking terrain to just uh, get the, the good stuff because everyone recommends always to use uh, uh, Games Workshop washes. They are, in my opinion, the best or the best that I've tried. Also, this paint is going to go on the top floor in the Stegaden Scale Green section. So just make sure to cover all these uh, areas and uh, of course, it's gonna look a little bit splotchy on open areas, and that's fine. It's going to look, uh, it's gonna act add to the natural uh, feel to the piece of terrain. Uh, so that's good. Don't worry about that. Once it's done, I'm going to start dry brushing the whole thing. For that, I'm going to use Palette Witch Flesh and a scenery brush. You can see that I put a small cardboard on the bottom when I was washing. That's because the wash is going to maybe run and drip into whatever surface you're working on. So you need to use that piece of cardboard just to make sure that you keep your stuff uh, clean. Especially if you paint in your room or something like that. You don't want a lot of wash dripping into your table or into the uh, ground or the floor. So uh, I'm going to use a cinder brush and into the cardboard I'm going to start uh, working the paint into the bristles. And this is going to be essentially a dry brush. And this brush, is, it's an okay brush. I don't like that the bristles uh, break a little too much. Uh, but it's great for big areas of terrain and for big pieces of terrain and uh, I'm going to start applying this into all of the ruins uh, as soon as you see that the paint is not catching anymore on the edges just load it again and get rid of the excess on the piece of cardboard and uh, yeah just make sure to that the brush is very dry before you apply it because if it has a little bit of paint it's going to make streaks and it's going to look messy and unnatural you want this paint to only catch on the recesses and especially if you're not gonna paint many of the details you don't really need to dry brush those very nicely you just need the edges and the pillars and places like that um, if you're not going to paint any details and it's gonna look pretty good if you go and just do one plain color and uh, just do the dry brush and color the day it's gonna look pretty good uh, but because I'm going to paint those details, uh, they don't need these dry brushes. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, try to catch those edges and make them look pretty neat. The same palette which flesh uh, goes for all of the colors and then that's it. Once that's done, I'm going to start painting the details. For that, I'm going to use lead belcher for all of the iron or silver parts on the structure. And I would recommend you to use thin paint. Uh, thin it down a little bit more than usual so it flows well into those cracks and crevices of uh, the silver areas that you're trying to paint because if you don't thin it down 
and you struggle with a little bit thicker paint, it's not going to flow as well. It's going to be a lot harder for you to keep uh, flowing and painting a little bit faster. If you thin it down a little bit more, it's not going to cover as well, but it's going to run easier and it's going to make it easier to paint all these, these areas actually quicker, even though you're going to apply a couple coats. Uh, but yeah, I would recommend you thin it down a little bit more than usual, even if it doesn't cover that well, and give it a second coat and it will look great. Once it's done, the model looks like this. Uh, you can see on the outside, and the outside they don't pop as much, but against the yellow they look pretty good. And uh, they are just basically all the pipes, all of the insides of the wall, all of the uh, mesh uh, and all of that stuff. Next I'm going to use Balthazar Gold and with this color I'm going to repeat the exact same process that I did for the silver but this time on the gold and uh, I'm going to try to do it the same way, thin it down a little bit more than usual, let it run a little bit easier so that it covers all these areas pretty good. Uh, if you mess up here and there, don't worry too much if it's not that big of a mess up, it's going to add a little bit more character. If you have a very obvious splotch where it shouldn't be, you can fix it up with the previous base coat and it'll be fine. Uh, but um, having thin paint is going to make it easier even for the paint to flow into the cracks of those skulls especially. Uh, because if you have thick paint there, uh, you, you will be able to see the primer through those cracks and you don't want that. So uh, And you want to paint it as quick as possible. So make sure to thin that color a little bit more than usual and just paint all these areas the same as we did with the silver. The new sets for the Basilica and the Administratum and kits like that uh, on their artwork have a, a lot yellower gold for that. You would use Retributor armor or some yellower gold if you want. I decided to go for this one for a, a more brassy gold and I'm going to do yellow highlights and I think that's the way I'm gonna do it, uh, but if you want a lot more yellow or gold, uh, you can use that other color if you want. Once it's done, I used two coats for the gold and for the silver, and I think it ended up looking very good. I uh, picked up every single detail. You don't have to pick every single detail, you can just go around and just paint the, par the parts that you want uh, to pop. And uh, this is how it should look. And I'm going to give a second round of washes, starting with Nuln Oil. Nuln Oil, I'm going to apply it on all of the silver areas, just trying to uh, cover them completely and go into the very recesses of these areas. You want the, the wash to pull a little bit in the edge where it touches the yellow or where it, where it touches the gray, so it creates uh, a dark line that is going to make a little bit of separation between the colors and it's going to make it a lot clearer which part is uh, metal and which part is uh, wall. So you want to do that and apply it a little bit liberally, uh, let it sit into big areas, let it pull on the recesses and it's going to look a lot more natural. Once that's done, I'm going to do the exact same thing for the gold, for, but for the gold, I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia again and just try to pick all of the little uh, rivets and all of the small uh, cracks on the gold on places where you don't see a lot of cracks like in between those uh, uh, bars of the windows you don't really need to wash that much you just need to get all those areas with the skulls all of the little rivets or little uh, all of the details like the, the eagles and stuff like that just make sure to pick all those uh, recesses with this wash and that's it this step is actually easier and faster than the previous steps that we did but you need to make sure that you are not shy with the wash and let it pull on those recesses because that's going to bring up the detail and it's going to look pretty good so make sure not to go cheap and use that wash done i'm going to finish up the metals with some dry brushes i'm going to start with stormhost silver and I'm going to use a large must monster brush from Army Painter. You can use any large uh, like base coating brush that you don't want anymore, that you want to use for dry brushing. I'm going to use that and I'm going to as well do it the same way that we did the dry brush on the walls on the piece of cardboard. And just make sure to get rid of most of the paint and just little, just leave a little bit on the bristles. And, and make sure to just dry brush and pick up those edges. And that's going to make the metallics stand out a lot more. They're going to shine very nicely. 
and uh, yeah this color is going to bring up uh, the shine of these colors and that's it just uh, don't miss any spots and um, it looks actually pretty good and it's actually faster than all of those the other steps and uh, yeah that's it once it's done I'm going to use uh, my final step that is going to be polished gold I wanted to have a very yellow highlight very yellow silvery highlight I like this color a lot for highlighting gold and I decided to use this as a dry brush and with this one I'm going to make sure to pick up all of the edges of the gold as we did with the silver the same method just pour a little bit of this uh, color into the cardboard and uh, just make sure to work it into the bristles and start uh, dry brushing all of these areas and catching all of this, those edges this step goes faster than uh, all of the previous steps and uh, just you, you just make need to make sure to not overdo it and not use too much paint on the brush so it only catches on the edges and gives them a yellowy highlight and I think it looks pretty good and uh, basically that's it and this is the finished model I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I think I, I wanted to make it a, very simple so that I can paint the whole set uh, quick and uh, then they end up looking very, uh, very nice like this one. I did some tests on the smaller pieces before I did this tutorial and I think uh, they complement each other very nicely. You can put them, stack them on top of each other and uh, I think they look great. If you want, you can spend a lot more time and uh, use weathering powders and a lot more uh, effects and weathering on the bottom so that, that it looks like dirt. Uh, you can do a lot of things with this set. Uh, for me, I'm going to keep it clean and I'm going to just leave it like this and I'm going to start working on the rest of my ruins. And uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun painting it. And I hope you found this tutorial entertaining and helpful. And if you liked it, please like the video, comment on it, and subscribe to the channel to see more videos in the future. This video was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for supporting my channel. And if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.